Aloha, all my paranormal people. Welcome once again to Insane Disappearances as I delve into the mysterious cases that have never been solved over the past couple of hundred years. And it's brought to you by David Paletis' very first book, Missing 411, uh, with a total amount of 411 cases that have never been solved, as I said before. And I am your host for this channel, Lamech. But anyway, uh, I'm going to read up on a story about a young boy um, named Terry Thompson. He was four years old when he disappeared. And it was around January 29th, 1938. Long time ago. But anyway, uh, to start off with, his father, whose name is Charles Thompson, he was employed by the um, U.S. Forest Service. And uh, him and his, oh, it's a forest service in uh, Northern California. Him and his wife, you know, they had a, uh, they lived a very rural lifestyle in a home that they uh, that was that they lived in that was adjacent to a place called the L River near a place called um, Ham's Creek. I mean Ham's Crossing. I'm sorry, Ham's Crossing. Now, around January 29th, 1938, the little boy Terry Thompson, four years old, uh, went outside to play with two of his friends. And somewhere along the line, he wandered away from the yard. The mother around, like around lunchtime, the mother came outside, obviously, to, tell, to call him in for lunch. She couldn't find him, but when she did find him, she scalded him and spanked him for wandering away from, you know, the, uh, the yard. Now, after that, of course, the boys stayed close by the, uh, the home so they wouldn't get in trouble. Now, comes dinner time. She comes outside and calls him in to eat, but he didn't respond. She talked to the young boys. They said they lost sight of him. They didn't know where he went. So at that point, that's when the parents got worried. They went outside. They scoured the area and started calling out his name. He didn't respond. So at that point, they called the sheriff's office. And the sheriff is a man named E.L. Williams, I believe. Uh, let me just double check just to make sure. I can turn this page. <laughs> yes. E.L. Williams. He puts out a search party and they um, scour the area as they did, but in a much more larger um, span. They couldn't find the boy. Now, shortly after he disappeared, a snowstorm hit, dumping, I said, a couple of inches of snow on the area. Um, now, during that search, they did find some footprints, some bare footprints, you know, in the snow. And I said, that's, that, that's the, there's a question that arises about that. Okay, this boy's four years old. He was in overalls and a sweater, and he had shoes on. Why did he take his shoes off, let alone his socks? Now, I don't know if he was barefoot, but he said barefoot. So, yeah, he was barefoot. He didn't have no socks on. So, he took his shoes and his socks off in the midst of this, this walking pace that he was in to get to where he was found. Okay, why would he do that? You know, why would even a four-year-old boy think to take his shoes off? You know, uh, I don't know. But anyway, so um, fast forwarding to March 28th, 1938, a man named Arthur, um, Arthur Carpenter was riding on his horse along with his dog, which was, you know, walking beside the horse. Uh, the, the, um, the dog came upon a bush called the Manzanita bush. Very... It's very thick, prickly, and thorny. Okay, the dog spots something underneath the bush, and he alerts in Arthur. Arthur, when well, he, he alerts Arthur, he, he gets off the horse and walks over to the bush, and he found the body of young Terry Thompson underneath the bush without his legs. So apparently the legs were gnawed off by some type of animal. Um, at that point, you know, obviously he called the authorities. Now, the sheriff... He himself was very upset about it, um, and he said he said in a uh, in a quote that he made for the Oakland Tribune, "I am not satisfied with the uh, with the theory that the boy merely wandered away from home, or that he was the victim of a wild animal." Um, the sheriff further stated that he didn't <clears throat> believe the boy could survive. In the mountains more than three days wearing just overalls and a sweater the sheriff had a strong feeling that foul play was involved now 
what kind of foul play would be involved where these people would actually think to take the boy's uh, shoes off and his socks then throw him underneath a bush or place him underneath a bush where there's nothing but a bunch of thorns? Why would they even think to do that? Or why would they want to do that? I don't know. You know, so, I mean, and I know he couldn't have crawled underneath the bush. So whatever took him, now this is my theory. This is my opinion. It's something a little bit more out of worldly or otherworldly they somehow must have some type of you know technology where they can dematerialize a person and they can de rematerialize under or in or around something or they're able to phase this per the, the body of that person through something solid and they come back together underneath or in or around this area i don't know that's my theory how they could actually end up there but you know because i wouldn't think that he would actually think to just crawl up under there but like i said that's just my theory but anyway of course you know they had the dogs that came out they had uh, caught in some bloodhounds they couldn't find a scent as usual okay just like every other case they bring out the dogs they can't find the scent so they didn't he's never found at that point but obviously month uh, about a month later the same year he was found um now for me uh i started uh when i read the part where he said the constable his name is charge love uh, uh his name is charles lavelle he said that um he was convinced the uh, the child had frozen to death uh the first night he was away from home both legs had been eaten off by animals and the body was horribly mutilated. He said, uh, but he discounted the theory that, uh, that Teddy had been carried off by a mountain lion. Now, I would say the same thing because most uh, animals that would carry a, a prey or food that they would catch would normally drag it or they would cover it with dirt to preserve it so they could eat it later now the only thing that was eaten away was the legs you know so he was found underneath that bush with just his thighs all the way up to his um his head or whatever um now another thing uh that i noticed about this case was that uh he you know like i said he was already scalded the first time about him wandering off so why would he do it a second time knowing that if he gets back home he's gonna get scalded again and beaten and probably be punished at that point you know so i wouldn't think that that would be the reason why he would wander off or that could be the reason why you know but he i would think he would be scared that his parents would scald him for that so there had to be some other reason why he just you know vanished from the site you know where he was last seen um let's see uh now when the sheriff thought there was foul play what kind of foul play would it be i don't know that's my question about that um also uh how you know that's another thing how would the constable know that he died you know in, you know right away after he disappeared he's not a coroner so he could have been so he could have survived a lot longer than that or he could have been kept somewhere and then dumped there after they finished with him who knows because a lot of cases where people disappear and they're found in like say water the um the coroner would say that okay they were in the water for two weeks but it shows that he was okay he was gone for two weeks the person was gone for two weeks but it shows that the body had only been in the water for three days so that means he was somewhere else for the remainder of those days for, uh, for the remainder of those two weeks now for that boy to just wander off and then disappear again you know and disappear this time something had to have happened something or someone had to have taken him and i know it wasn't no human that's much i do know there wasn't no human to, to have done this because there would have been some ev some evidence stating that a human had done it or it would have led back to someone that did it you know humans are wired to leave evidence that's just the way we are you know but for someone to kidnap a child and not leave any evidence whatsoever all you find is a dead body and a bunch of questions on how why did he disappear how did he disappear and in the logical thinking mind of a human or any other person especially a cop a young person or any person cannot just seemingly vanish without a trace. 
and then just pop up dead somewhere a month later, you know. But that's how it is, you know. It's part of the unknown, and the unknown I would think is not is not made to be known. That's just my theory. I don't know, but um. Like I said, there's a lot of crazy questions that a lot of people are not willing to ask when it comes to this case, which is the reason why the car, uh, the uh, the the constable came up with that silly idea about what happened to the boy, or how some of the stuff that was brought up about his remains and how he was found was never put in the articles for uh, in in the Tribune, the, the Oakland Tribune, you know. Um, now. Like, I, like it says here, um, the article stated that the body was well preserved. Thus, you could probably determine what had uh, been chewing on the boy. But that part wasn't that part wasn't put in the uh, you know in the article. So, you know why they do stuff like that? I'll never know. You know, and, and plus the fact I know that boy wouldn't just crawl. You know, he wouldn't voluntarily crawl on a, a prickly bush like that. And it was a thick one, too. So he would have it would have been a struggle just to get underneath that darn thing. But it is what it is. But anyway, um, if you are a reader, you can go to uh, canammissing.com and purchase all of his books. He has at least about six books on his website. And he's got a new one coming out that's, that's uh, commemorated, commemorate, yeah, not com commemorated, but it's centered around all the hunters that disappear, you know. Um, but, yeah, you can go to canammissing.com to find out more about the books if you like to read. But if you like my page and you like what I'm telling you about these up cases, like and subscribe below and shoot me a comment, you know, and tell me what you think. Or if you got any theories of your own, you know, I would love to hear it. Or if you know anybody that had any experiences, I would love to hear that too. And if you want me to, I will voice it on my vlog you know in my next story or whenever or whenever you contact me you know as far as kim star 66 if you still want me to uh talk about what happened to this person that was close to you i will definitely do that i will mention it in my next in my in my next vlog if not okay that's fine with me but um like i said like and subscribe below if you like my videos and i will definitely keep coming back with more cases on the um what's in what's in these books okay and i will keep you guys abreast of what's really going on so that's all i got for right now i will be bringing you videos probably three times a week monday wednesday and friday so that way you can you know you know stay like i said stay up and current to an update and i'll update update you on what's going on so always in party aloha mahalo and a huiho which of course means till we meet again in hawaii be blessed, guys. Peace.